Who would have thought a small team from New York would win a World Futsal Cup? It was an unreal experience. It was the first time a United States team won the World Futsal Championship. Futsal is a small-sided indoor variation of soccer. Futsal is the perfect combination of fast-paced explosive action, which makes it incredible to watch. Futsal is one of the fastest growing indoor sports in the world, and it's quickly gaining popularity. In the city that never sleeps, one 19-year-old has developed a huge love for futsal. The passion for the sport has forever impacted his young life. If it wasn't for futsal, I wouldn't be where I am today. Futsal gave me everything, pretty much. You know, it gave me new friends from around the world. It made me win a world futsal championship against a professional team. It gave me so many opportunities, yet I'm still 19. Futsal is basically my life, so I have a long future in futsal. I'm Joel Vieira. I'm the captain of Alianza Futsal, and I love playing futsal. I was growing up in a futsal environment ever since I was younger, seeing my parents play in a lot of indoor leagues. So I was pretty much raised into playing futsal. Playing futsal really helped me um, develop my foot skills a lot. Before futsal, I wasn't that good technical wise. And then I started practicing and playing futsal and I got a lot better with my foot skills. When I play futsal, I really enjoy making plays to finish the goal. Because futsal isn't an individual sport, it's a team sport. Like everybody has to put their part. In futsal, you really don't have one position. Like everybody plays everywhere. The most important thing is stepping on the ball because once you receive the ball and step on it, you have options to go left, right, back, or forward. Other than outdoor, if you trap it with the inside foot, you only have one direction to go, which is the way you stop the ball. Futsal is a very um, emotional game other than soccer and I feel like a lot of people would agree with that because it's, it's a different game than soccer. Futsal is more intense. Usually in futsal when there's an attacker and they shoot and the defense saves it, we usually celebrate because I guess it's the emotion. It's like scoring a goal, you know, blocking a goal is just like scoring a goal in futsal. Ever since Joey was very little, he would love to play soccer. Soccer is part of our culture. Um, my dad grew up watching his dad playing soccer. I grew up watching my dad playing soccer. Joey grew up watching me and my husband play soccer. It's just part of our culture. I'm Sheila Quispe. I'm Joey's mom, and I'm also the president of Alianza Futsal. Even when we're home, we're watching a soccer game. When we go outside to the yard, we're playing soccer. So ever since Joey was little, he grew up watching everybody play soccer. And he will always be excited when the weekend came. So every time his dad would play in between, there's like a, a break and halftime, and he will be the first little kid that you see that he will grab the ball and start kicking. There would be times where I would just run in the field and my parents would grab me because I would just run in the middle of a game. Yeah. 
At the age of four, Joel's parents signed him up for his local soccer team. And this is the moment he began to experience his own love for the sport. I remember his first game in soccer. He was four years old. It's the first game of Joelito in his life. He came to a point where he told me, Mom, I want to join a, a team. So we uh, put Joey in um, a recreational league. Oh, it's a goal, mira, it's a goal, Joey. He was very happy running after the ball because like I mentioned before, he grew up watching us play. So when he finally uh, got to play in, in his own team, he was very, very happy. I liked outdoor. It was fun, you know, I love soccer. The memories I have from playing soccer when I was little is scoring goals a lot. He would just want to be on top to score a goal. He never liked to be on the defense side. He would always go on top and score. And every time he would score, he would get so happy and gel and hug his friends. Growing up, I would play for a lot of teams and a lot of coaches wanted me for their team. So play for different teams, I would play different positions. So my mind would get mixed up. But throughout the years, I started playing more back. And I, I was confused at first, but as I got older, I started liking playing defense because I get more touches in the ball and I get to play a, like a bigger role for the team. That's baby. Sometimes the coaches would put me midfield, even goalie. You know, whenever a teammate doesn't show up, I would be that player to play any position. And every time I played this position, I would really have a lot of fun. Good. And I think around that time was when his leadership qualities came in. He would be the player that will listen and do whatever the coach said, like, okay, play defensive, play attacking, play mid, we need you here. It was more of the love for the team and winning than actually focusing, okay, I'm just this position. So he was a very versatile player. As Joel's club team entered the winter season, for the first time, he was able to play indoors, just like his parents. Back in 2013, I believe, I used to play for an outdoor club, and they told us when it's winter, we go inside and play indoor tournaments. So the first time I played the indoor tournament with my outdoor club, it was kind of confusing, you know, different size ball, different size court, different rules. But when I got on the field and started playing with the ball, it, like it came naturally to me. Growing up, I would see my parents play indoor and I would see that they wouldn't just stay in place like an outdoor. They would pass and move. So I just felt very comfortable. I really loved my first uh, official indoor game because I, I scored three goals and I had all my teammates uh, supporting me and cheering me on. He played so free and he was so happy and he was uh, being very creative and I saw the difference of how he was enjoying the game. It was so wonderful to see him very happy while playing. I used to enjoy see Joy playing. You know, uh, you, uh, you have to support the kid and no matter what, everything they do. My name is Paolo. I'm Joy's daddy and I'm the coach of Alianza Futsal. I'm carrying the ball here, come on, look. But I was a little tough for him because I played the sport. So I always ask him more, more and more. Sometimes it's not good, but I enjoy him to see him playing. After playing his first ever small-sided game, a commercial on TV sparked the interest of a young Joel. I saw a commercial on TV saying Fobolito MLS, and I informed my mom about the commercial I saw. 
poquito, explícanos sobre este futbolito de MLS. Este es un torneo de 4 contra 4 que el equipo grande este, se gana un, 2 mil dólares. ¿Y cómo es el nivel? ¿Cómo está? Este, la verdad muy alto, creo que, que pues por los 2 mil dólares. And he came running to the kitchen and he was like, mom, mom, I saw this futbolito commercial and I asked him, futbolito, like, what, what is that? And he was like, oh, it's a 5v5 tournament that will be played in Flushing. And you know, uh, Flushing have many competitive teams. I couldn't really participate in Futbolito MLS at first with any of my travel club teams because Futbolito MLS was a really competitive tournament. So none of my travel teams really joined that tournament. So what I suggested to my parents is how about I make my own team and invite my friends from different clubs and academies and take out our own team. And I told him, okay, but when when it will be and he say mom it's gonna be this sunday and i told him are, um, are you serious joy you want to do this when i made the team i decided to call it alianza because my parents already had their soccer team and the name was alianza so i guess i just wanted to make um, a mini version of the adults after deciding the team name joel's team was registered and needed a coach that's when paulo joel's father stepped in to help his son's new team oh the tournament was so so fun, like we color fire, uh, actually we color fire the wild, wild car, no? Wild car. And I see all the kids running to me, yeah, we made it, we made it in the wild, wild car. Only one team per group would go to the, the playoffs, right? And I remember me and my teammates praying, praying because we, were, we weren't first in our group, we were actually second. But there was a wild card for a second team to go through the playoffs also. And a miracle happened that we made the wild card because of our goal differences. We actually played the same team we lost to in the regular games in the finals. And believe it or not, we actually beat them. To see them play for the first time together in a smaller environment because they used to play outdoors every time. And this was one of the very few times that they were introduced to the 5v5. They did great and we really like how they play together. After Futbolito MLS, um, that's when things start, really started shaping up for the club Alianza. Um, after that day on, Alianza just became a real official team. Winning this highly competitive tournament against big academies in the tri-state area, invitations just started pouring in for Joel's new team, Alianza. So after winning the Futbolito MLS 5v5 tournament, we received all these invitations for other tournaments and we just started winning. Everywhere we would go, New York City FC Cup, Cosmos Cup, Red Bulls Cup, uh, New York City Cup, Interleagues Cup, the highest tournaments uh, in the tri-state area that we will participate. We, we came out as champions and it was just Joey and five of his friends. Winning a lot of other indoor league tournaments, it was it was a nice experience, you know, beating a lot of teams, facing the same teams a lot. They still can't beat us. It was it was really great. With a lot of victories came a lot of rewards. Joel and his teammates found themselves in a glorious Yankee Stadium to accept the medals and be crowned champions. When my mom said that we were going to be in the Yankee Stadium like on the field, we really didn't believe it cuz, you know, we were kids and like who has the chance to be on the field at Yankee Stadium in, in the Jumbotron. The reason we were in Yankee Stadium was because we won a tournament in New Jersey, a 4v4 tournament. It was amazing winning that tournament, but we didn't really believe that we will be in Yankee Stadium. We just thought, you know, like any other tournament, you just get a medal and that's it. But having this opportunity to actually be on the jumbo screen at Yankee Stadium really felt great. And everybody started taking pictures and sending it to their friends and nobody really could have believed it. After many successful years of winning many championships in the tri-state area, the team searched for high level competition tournaments outside New York. We wanted to search for an official um, regional or national tournament, but I didn't find nothing on indoor 6v6. But we did find um, the U.S. Futsal Federation tournament, a regional that was going to take place in Wildwood. 
and we decided to register the boys and we got to finals. We lost in penalties. Playing futsal for the first time and we didn't do great, but we did good, you know, we, we did what we had to do, but it's just another level over there. But we really enjoyed it. We really enjoyed the, the futsal atmosphere. So after that, we just started training more and more, just 5v5 instead of 6v6. And at first it was difficult, but gradually we all like, we got used to it and we started enjoying it a lot. Oh, it's not easy. Futsal, like many people can say, oh, I play indoor, indoor, but indoor has nothing to do with futsal. Uh, you have to be so small and quick to play, mentally fast. You have to know the move before the ball gets to you. You already have to know what to do. So we started practicing every day in an indoor basketball court, like small drills, quick pass and goes, you know, formations. After that tournament, we receive an email uh, from the Federation inviting us to go to nationals in San Jose, California to represent New York. We got to play uh, one of the toughest national tournaments. Every single game was very competitive and hard. At first playing like big academies, we were nervous because we weren't really an academy. We just built a team between friends. But I think the, the great chemistry among the players gave them the ability to win every single game by many, many goals and to finalize the tournament as national champions. And I think that's pretty much where everything started. And I think we had the best 01, 02 teams in the nation. After winning nationals in 2016, the club was attracting a lot of attention. They received an invitation to play the biggest futsal tournament in the world, the World Futsal Cup. The World Futsal Cup is a tournament held in Barcelona, Spain and it consists of teams from all over the world. Japan, Australia, Brazil. Only the best elite clubs of the world get to play. It's such a high level because you play professional teams. For example, Barcelona, Corinthians. A team that practices every day, twice a day, for the whole year. At first my reaction was like, wow, we're gonna play these big clubs, like professional clubs. So in my mind, I didn't think we were ready because of the little practices we had. But it was an amazing experience because we got to see different cultures and different players from around the world. And since we were under the same hotel, we got to, you know, talk and communicate with the other teams. We were that team that nobody really knew. It was the first time that anybody heard the name Alianza Futsal. And seeing us progress to the semifinals, it was an amazing experience, but it felt overwhelming because us kids from New York, you know, United States, we're not really used to that environment in playing in stadium. So in 2016, the semifinal was against Rio from Brazil and it was played in a stadium, so we were all nervous and overwhelmed. First half, we started winning 2-0 and we were very happy halftime. Then we started second half, um, we ended up losing by two goals. We almost had it. We lost to Real Futsal, which is a team that practices every day, twice a day for the whole year. They have the, the best coaches. They have uh, uh, nutritionists. They have a lot of discipline. 
and here futsal like i say we have problems renting the courts because they're so expensive so uh, we were making sure the boys train at least once a week but like we saw it wasn't enough they needed to train more but uh, at the end of the day we were happy because our boys play very good after a very impressive first tournament joel and the team came back to new york and started training with their mindset on the next world football cup in 2017. We decided that we want to come back and, and try again. It was a real motivator for the boys. They started taking training more seriously. Coming back home from Barcelona, uh, I really started to train even harder because I really wanted to get that trophy. So I would train every day, twice a week, morning and night. As Joel was getting ready for the World Futsal Cup at the end of the year, it would be in an outdoor game where he would suffer a tragic setback. I was playing outdoor with my White Plains Academy team and I was actually playing midfield. There was a long ball in the air and I went for a 50-50 and somehow I did a movement and the other player from the other team actually fell on top of my knee. It was scary because I thought I broke my leg because you could see the patella popping out of the right side of my knee. So he had a right knee dislocation in where um, when the paramedics came, they took him to the ER and the doctor uh, put the patella back in. It was very painful for Joey and the doctor this time, he said that he needed a couple more months of recovery and that he wasn't going to be able to play. Emotionally, it sucked because I started realizing that I'm going to miss this tournament that I prepared myself so hard for and this injury happened so, you know, I really put myself down. After missing the World Cup in 2017, Joel's mind was set on playing the World Cup in 2018. Going to therapy every day, just, you know, getting physically better and mentally, you know, better also. After therapy, I would just train again day and night just to prepare myself for 2018. And I really, I was really confident this year, that year, actually, because I felt like we had a really good squad. And then, unfortunately, a couple weeks before traveling to the World Futsal Cup, I was uh, running back home from school, you know, getting a daily jog in and the rug was frozen outside my porch. So when I ran, I slipped on the rug. And I heard him screaming, Mom. So I went out to find out what had happened. And he told me, no, I'm fine. I'll be right back. And I say, no, you're not going anywhere. I called my brother Alex and he came down and we both helped Joey to sit down. When I twisted my, my foot on the carpet, I thought it was just like, you know, a little sprain that will go away in a week or so. So when we went to the ER, I saw the x-rays and all three bones were all over the place. And I broke my three metal tarsals on my foot. Metatarsals fracture is a fracture of the top part of the foot. With this injury, he wouldn't be able to play at all. Emotionally, again, I was like, wow, I'm gonna miss the 2018 World Futsal Cup again. Fracturing my metal tarsals um, actually put me in a boot. So I would walk everywhere with, you know, one shoe and then one big boot, you know, walking like a penguin sideways. So I realized that this time there's actually no way I was able to play in the World Futsal Cup. So it really put me down. And not being able to play with my teammates another year just really sucked. Missing the World Futsal Cup both previous years, Joel's last chance to compete would be the 2019 World Futsal Cup. But this time, it wouldn't just be injuries preventing him from playing. After coming back from the 2018 Cup, unfortunately, I started receiving these texts that my friends are all going away for college. So we weren't going to take out a team to the World Futsal Cup in 2019. That's when I was starting to think to myself, like, wow, I'm really not going to play. I only played one year in Spain. 
the other two I miss and I won't get another shot at it. It, it put me down because I really wanted to win the World Futsal Cup since we participated for the past three years and never won the tournament. Joel resorted to reaching out to a friend he made during the World Futsal Cup the year before. And Joel used his outgoing personality to make new friends from different parts of the world. Since I wasn't playing, I was mostly talking with other clubs and coaches about futsal. Uh, after the tournament, they throw a party for New Year's in the hotel. So me and my teammates were just downstairs, you know, having a good time. And I saw Pedro by himself. So I actually went up to him. And since I spoke Portuguese, we, I started communicating with him and we just started vibing and became friends from there. Meu nome é Pedro Johan, jogo no Corinthians e sou goleiro. Iniciei na minha estreia no Mundial de 2017 em Barcelona. Nosso primeiro jogo foi contra a Aliança. Aniversário do Erice, e que a gente quase perdeu. Aí eu conheci ali, mas tive contato, ganhei essa plano aqui. Pedro was somebody that was just a friend and throughout the years just texting and talking to each other. He eventually came to New York where I live and he stayed with us and he became family. Ele é determinado, ele sempre tá querendo aprender mais, sempre tá querendo jogar bola. Ele é sensacional, né? Um cara alegre, o tempo todo pra cima, brincalhão, coração grande, sabe? Que se tu tiver num mau momento, ele vai te ajudar, pode contar com ele. É uma pessoa sensacional, um irmão mesmo. Joel proposed an idea to Pedro to create a new team for Alianza, but one that they would both be captains for the 2019 World Futsal Cup in which Pedro agreed. Like sons, like fathers, both Joel and Pedro's dad shared the same passion they had for futsal and created a strong bond. In 2019, the club would make Marcos the technical director of Alianza Futsal. After a successful summer tournament, both fathers would coach the team that their sons made for the 2019 World Futsal Cup. Oh, Marco is not a, I, I'm not gonna say, we're not a business um, partner. We, uh, we are family. Um, we have the same mentality that is uh, try to help kids grow up in life, you know, give them opportunity. I don't know, I think God put Marcos in my way and so far everything is working well. Uh, it's so wonderful to, to help me, uh, the, the family, not only him, the wife, his son. There's not many people in the world that, that wants to help. Uh, people, you know, there's many people that only care about money, but Marco, no, Marco is, is, is a wonderful guy. O primeiro aspecto que foi ter aceitado o convite foi é, a família. Paulo, Sheila, Capitão Joey, Alex, são pessoas maravilhosas, né, que eu conheci e me tornei amigos e mais do que isso, me considero da família Alianza, né, então esse é o aspecto mais importante. Sou Marco Johan, treinador de futsal. Trabalho no Fluminense Futebol Clube. Atualmente eu sou coordenador de futebol e o objetivo é fazer com que o Aliança se desenvolva ainda mais, né, no futsal, através da metodologia que eu venho utilizando durante esses longos, longo ano de experiência, implantar no Aliança para que ele se torne uma potência de futsal nos Estados Unidos e também a nível mundial. The stage was set and Alianza entered the 2019 World Futsal Cup. The main question for Joel and the team was how they would get along being players from different teams and not knowing each other. 
Meeting my new teammates, I was not really nervous because, you know, I played for many academies before with new kids. So I, I usually, I'm a humble person, so I usually adapt with a lot of kids like quick and become friends with them. So meeting my new team in the airport, it was really like I've seen them before. Like we played together before, so I wasn't really like shy or nervous or anything. We created such a great bond that we just started joking around the hotel, you know, started like fooling around, you know, like normal teenagers. We started recording some jokes that we were saying, you know, we would have uh, little rap battles in the room, in Portuguese actually, so it was really a great experience. Yeah, it's very difficult, you know? I had a base here in Brazil, in Rio de Janeiro, here, que are my athletes from the Fluminense, who já conheciam o sistema de jogo, mas eu tinha assim três atletas né, que é, só tiveram um treino, né, são os, os dois atletas que vieram do Palmeiras e o Joey, né? então nós tivemos um treino para o quê? definir nosso sistema de jogo, a maneira de marcar e como os atletas foram muito dedicados e inteligentes, isso facilitou bastante nossa estratégia de jogo e ao longo da competição que a gente foi acertando Alianza's first game was against no other than heavy favorite and home team, FC Barcelona. This was a big test for the team who just met each other, and the win was crucial. Our game opener was against Barca, and being that I was actually starting and actually getting to play against Barcelona, it was it was calm for me. Like I felt okay, you know, I felt like I played them before, yet I didn't actually play because I was injured the past years. So stepping on the field, you know, we warmed up and then when the whistle blew, we just, we did what we knew we wanted to do, which was play futsal. The most amazing part of playing Barcelona for the first game was that I saw everybody really passionate for the club. So I didn't really think they were gonna put so much heart and effort and emotion for the club. Like they played for the heart of Alianza. We actually beat Barcelona by a lot of goals. Everybody thought we were gonna lose. So we were kind of the underdogs. So it was really cool, you know, beating them and proving everybody wrong. After beating Barcelona, we, we went to the locker room all hyped and, you know, we were celebrating because it was our game opener. So in a tournament, your most important game is the first game to be the top of the leaderboard. So we got to that locker room, we started celebrating, we got to the hotel room, everybody couldn't believe it. And everybody started staring at us and started cheering for us because they were like, wow, a team from New York actually beat a big professional club. And having that like, I guess, the environment around us really gave us more confidence. Alianza went on to be undefeated in the group and win the semifinal game. To the shock of many, Alianza had reached the final of the 2019 World Futsal Cup. Everybody thought that Barcelona and Corinthians was going to be in the final. Yet, since we came out first in our group, we left Barca to play Corinthians in the semifinals. And finding out that Barcelona stayed because Corinthians beat them, it was it was like a, like wow, like nobody believed it. Everybody thought it was going to be Barcelona top of the group and playing Corinthians in the final. Yeah, even the group stage, they the way they they built the group stage was for that to happen. Um, I don't know if 
many people was not happy to see us in the final, but I guess we was the surprise. The final for the 2019 World Futsal Cup was Corinthians versus Alianza Futsal. Corinthians were the reigning champions two years running and the heavy favorite to win the cup. Not many people gave Alianza Futsal a chance against powerhouse side Corinthians. Una final bastante, bastante interesante, aunque bajo mi humilde punto de vista, Corinthians está un paso por encima, eh, tanto a nivel de físico como a nivel técnico y sobre todo a nivel grupal. Corinthians es un equipo que durante toda la temporada es un equipo y juega en un equipo y juega las ligas y Alianza es un equipo conformado para este torneo, no sé si para algún otro, pero, pero uh, los chicos, eh, Alianza es un club de, de Nueva York. Arriving in the facility that we were going to play the final, we were all in the locker room and we were all talking like we got this, you know, we prepared like we prepared so long for this. We didn't just come all the way from different parts of the world just to lose in the final. I remember my dad telling all the players he was so thankful and grateful for all these players to come and play for the team. Ever since my parents had Alianza JPS, I would see them praying before every final, you know, to protect the players, for no one to get injured. So I suggested that we should pray also, you know, to avoid any injuries and that God will always be on our side. I always ask for God to bless us and that from the beginning os atletas, né, que não aconteça nenhum tipo de, de acidente, né, que ninguém se machuque. E a gente sempre pede a proteção de Deus. Creio muito nisso. Everybody was nervous but pumped, you know. Everybody was ready. They knew what they were going to do outside in the field. They knew they had one job, which was shock everybody that was watching that final. Walking out to the stadium, it was nerve-wracking for me because I never played in an environment so big like that with commentators. Por parte de la Alianza Futsal, tenemos con el número 13 a Artur Almeida, 17 Joel, eh, Joel Enrique Vieira. So many fans around the whole field, like what 18-year-old will experience this ever in their life? It was just a once-in-a-lifetime experience. In the team huddle before we started the game, I just remember our coach saying, listen guys, this is a once in a lifetime experience. Show what you guys got, give it your all, give 100% with all heart, and let's get the job done. actually started defending first. So we just sat back and waited for Corinthians to attack to study them, to see how they play. There were so many chances where we actually almost scored, but they just had an amazing goalie. Sí, sí, es, es, son penaltis son porque penaltis. salen todos los jugadores a pista, muy estilo brasileño, suponemos ahora que todos se abrazarán. So, in penalties it really doesn't take much skill, it's pretty much luck. So, you know, everybody I guess, not put their heads down, but they were, you know, kind of nervous. We all like backed up our goalie, we hyped them up, you know, you got this, like don't worry about it, you'll save everyone. We huddled up as a team in the middle of the court and Pedro was actually next to me. Corinthians was up first.
So I remember Pedro screaming like, let's go! And I realized that Corinthians missed the first penalty, so it was like, wow. Afterwards, nobody missed any penalties. Like, everybody made it. And I remember the third penalty coach actually came up to me and he was like, Joel, take it. And me, you know, being captain, I saw Kayo, our leading goal scorer, you know, he was hungry for goals. I actually gave him the ball. I was like, here, let's be champs. All I remember is closing my eyes and looking down and out of nowhere, everybody just started celebrating. I actually collapsed my knees and started crying and I was like, wow, I'm a world champion. And just, you know, remembering the past injuries I had, all the past years that I couldn't play, it was so emotional for me. While I was on my knees, my dad came and started hugging me. It was like a dream uh, going through my, through my mind. Joy crying on the floor. I hug uh, Coach Marcos, but it's something that I will never forget. And I saw my mom crying, and it was really emotional. Thank you, 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 thank you. To see my son crying there and play what he loved the most, I felt very emotional. And I remember pointing my uncle saying that we did it. o melhor momento foi nossa comemoração, né? Ali na entrega do, do troféu, né? Dos prêmios e todos os atletas, né? Felizes, todo mundo bem emocionado, os atletas, toda a comissão técnica, né? Sentimento de dever cumprido, aquele momento ali foi inesquecível, né? A gente está na história do Aliança, né? Que foi realmente histórico. Isso para mim foi um momento inesquecível. I'm here to stay. Small club, big heart. Aliança Futsal. Small club with big heart, Alianza Corazón. Uh, small club, big heart, Alianza Corazón. Forever. Let's go, Alianza. Small club, big heart. Vai, Alianza. Pequeno club, grande coração.